Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my Linear Algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about transposes. I'm going to talk about how they affect determinants, sums, products, and inverses, and a whole bunch more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the transpose of a matrix is created by swapping all of the rows and columns. And the symbol for a transpose is a T like that for a matrix A. So let me give you an example. And transposing is just a operation that is going to be expanded upon as I make additional videos and you'll see why it is so useful. So let's say we have a matrix one, two, three and four. A transpose is just going to be equal to one, two, three, and four. And you can see right here that what I did was I took the one and the two, I put it in this column, I took the three and the four and put it in that column right there. Okay. But what happens whenever we have a rectangular matrix? So let's have a matrix B. And let's say it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we just do the exact same thing. We just get a different result. In this situation, we take the one and the two, the three and the four, and the five and the six. And you can see here that this matrix is three by two, while this one is two by three. Alrighty, so that is the basics of transposition. And now what I want to do is talk about how transposing matrices affects determinants. Alright, so the determinants of the transpose is going to equal the determinant of the original. So that means if we have a matrix A, that is going to be equal to A, T, like that. Alright, so and I can go and prove it. So let's go and get our matrix A. That is going to be one times four minus three times two. And the matrix that I'm referring to here is the one, two, three, and four that I just showed you on the previous slide. And this of course is going to be equal to negative two. And if I would take the transpose, which what is the transpose? Well, that's going to be one, two, three, and four. So this is a transpose. Well, how's that going to work out? So we'll go a transpose is equal to one times four minus two times three, which is also equal to negative two. But let's go and let's use a more complex matrix. So let's say we have a matrix C and we're going to be using a lot of the techniques we have covered in the previous tutorial in this tutorial. Okay, so we have our new matrix here. What would be the transpose of this? Well, it would be four, five, and one. Take that row and just make it a column. Negative two, six, and two, one, four, and three. And if we go and get the determinant of our original C, we're going to use here the rule of SARS, which I covered previously. So this makes it easy to get our determinant for this three by three matrix. Spread this out a little bit more. And you can see I'm just taking the four and five and adding it to the end of the original matrix. And if you didn't see that tutorial, that is going to give us our Determinant. Again, I took the negative 2 and the 6, put it on the end. 1, 4, and 3. I'm going to take the 1 and the 4, put it right there. Now what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to take this diagonal, this diagonal, this diagonal. And then I'm going to be able to take this diagonal, this diagonal, and that diagonal. And the way this works out is I take the 4 times the six times the three, add the five and two and one, taking the diagonals from left to right, plus one times negative two times four, and then going from right to left with the diagonals, I get negative five times negative two times three minus, and I just subtract 
these products minus one times six times one and then if I add all these up I get 72 plus 10 minus 8 minus negative 30 minus 32 minus 6 and if I go and add and subtract those up I get 66 so that is the determinant of C if I want to write that in again alright so now what I can do is I can go and find the determinant for the transpose of C so just to prove everything that I just did here is true so how is this going to work out much in the same way I'm gonna go 4 negative 2 1 get the 4 put it in there again and the negative 2 if you don't understand anything that's going on here watch my determinant video 5 and 6 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 all right I'm gonna do the exactly the same thing I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna get this and this and this those diagonals let me do it in a different way this time so I'm gonna say 4 times 6 times 3 plus negative 2 times 4 times 1 plus 1 times 5 times 2 then I'm going to get the other diagonals going in this direction. So right there, right there, and right there. Except we get the negative versions, or we subtract them. So minus negative 2 times 5 times 3 minus 4 times 4 times 2 minus 1 times 6 times 1. And this is going to give us 72 minus 8 plus 10 plus 30 minus 32 minus 6 and that tells us that if we get the transposed matrix C and find the determinant for it that gives us a value of 66 exactly as we did before all right so good stuff hopefully that makes sense and now I want to talk about how a transpose would affect the sum of two matrices. So the way this is going to work out is if we have a matrix A and B, we sum them, and then we get the transpose. Well, that is going to be equal to A transpose plus B transpose. And let's go and get some of these matrices here. So here is A. That is 1, 2, 3. 3 and 4 and let's go and get matrix B which is going to be 5 6 4 and 2 all right so what happens if I go and add these two matrices together well they're easy to add I just get 6 and 8 7 and 6 Okay, so good stuff. And of course, I added 1 to 5, 2 to 6, 3 to 4, 4 to 2 to get exactly what you see right there. Now what I want to do is I want to go and get the sum of these and find the transpose for them. Well, I just take the 6 and 8 top row, put it right there. Take the second row, 7 and 6, put it right there. Boom and boom. Done. Now let's go and get the transposes of B and A. Why did I choose to get the transpose of B first? I don't know. I just wrote it that way. Sorry if that was confusing. And let's go and get the transpose of A. And that is 1, 3, 2, and 4. And as you can see, if I then go and get the transpose of A and the transpose of B, and I add those together, so that's going to be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, plus... 5 and 4 and 6 and 2 that is going to give us a final answer of 6 and 7 and 8 and 6 which is exactly the same as this and everybody is happy all right so now let's talk about how a transpose would affect the product of two matrices all right, so I'm going to use the same matrices that I used before just to keep everything very simple here. And basically, the transpose of the product of two matrices is going to be, well, let me just show you here. 
So if we go and get the product of these two matrices and get the transpose of it, that is going to be equivalent to the transpose of B times the transpose of A in opposite orders. So what do we want to do? I want to go and find what do we get if we go and multiply A times B? Well, of course I've covered this in previous videos. So if you want to know how to multiply matrices, basically go watch those videos. So I'm going to multiply these together. And if I do that, I am going to get an answer of 13. 31 and 10 and 26. All right, so that means that the transpose of this product is going to be is going to be 13, 10, 31 and 26. All right, good stuff. So now what I want to do is I want to get the transpose of B times the transpose of A. And if I go and do that, guess what? I'm going to get 5 plus 8, 15 plus 16, 6 plus 4, and 18 plus 18, or 8, sorry, 8. And of course, the transpose of A is equivalent to 1, 2, three and four, and the transpose of B is equivalent to five and six and four and two. So that's where those came from. And if I come over here and add these guys up, I get 13, 31, 10, and 26, which is exactly the same as that. All right, good stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to practice what we've learned in the past to find inverses using determinants, but we're also going to learn about how transposes affect inverses. Okay, so the rule here is if you have a transposed matrix C, you get the inverse of it. That is going to be equivalent to the inverse of this matrix that you get the transpose of that. And if you remember from previous videos, maybe it was the last one, I can't remember. It was a, a fairly recent video. If we want to find the inverse of a matrix, one of the easy ways of doing it is getting the determinant of A, B, C, and D from our matrix and multiplying it times D, B, negative C, and A. And of course, this is for a matrix that's going to be A, B, C, and D, exactly like that. Well, guess what? We have one. It is called A. We've been using it. One, two, three, and four. So let's go and let's find our inverse for this matrix. And this is going to be equal to the determinant of one, two, three and four with a one on top and then we're going to multiply that times four negative two negative three and one if we do that we're going to end up getting negative one half which we can multiply times four negative two negative three and one and if we do that we end up with the inverse, which is negative two, one, three over two, and negative one over two, exactly like that. Well then, if we come in and we get our inverse, and we get the transpose of it, we end up with negative two, three over two, one, and negative one half. All right, good stuff. Well, now we're going to get the transpose of A, like this, which of course is going to be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And we want to go and get the inverse of it. So this is going to be the inverse of this guy like this, 
All right, so there we are. To do so, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get the determinant. This time, it is going to be for 1, 3, 2, and 4. And that's under 1. And then we're going to multiply that times 4, negative 2, negative 3, and 1. If we do so, we get negative 1 half times 4, negative 3, negative 2, and 1. And we find out that, indeed, the matrix we are left with is negative 2, 1, 3 over 2, and negative 1 over 2. And yes, indeed, we have proved that these two guys right here are equal, and everybody's happy. All right, so there you go, guys. Hopefully you found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.